Hi everyone, now that we're at the end of 2023, I thought it might be worth looking at some of my achievements in science policing this year. And this has been a busy year for me. For the first time, I started sending a lot of emails to publishers, authors, journals, universities. I was also kindly given access to Image Twin AI, which is a software that finds duplicated images in scientific papers. I posted a preprint about image duplication. I managed to kickstart several investigations at universities, and I wrote a few blogs for the website For Better Science, one of which seems to have resulted in the suspension of the Saudi Journal of Biological Sciences from Web of Science. So I've been busy, but what I wanted to look at today is which of the many papers that I criticised or commented on have actually been retracted. And let's start with the journal BMC Complementary Medicine and Therapies. Does anyone remember that weird montage parody I uploaded about my findings in this journal back in June of 2022? I kind of hope no one remembers, it was a pretty weird video. I don't think the editor of BMC, Complementary Medicine and Therapies, watched that video, fortunately. But they did follow up on a lot of my pub peer comments, and this resulted in four retractions this year. Here's a meme I made for one of those papers before. And when the journal looked carefully at this paper, they found well, not more memes, but they found more problems. Like this chromatogram, for example, seems to be missing part of the trace. And in the supplementary data, there are issues with these blots. Like here, for example, there seems to be a rectangle around this band. Well, how does this happen? Well, it can happen when uh, someone does something like this, copying and moving a band around. So yes, this paper and three others were retracted by BMC Complementary Medicine and Therapies. And I have to say that my faith has been somewhat restored in this journal and to an extent the publisher. Spring and Nature does seem to take action slowly, and their employees and editors are at least sometimes inquisitive and motivated when it comes to research integrity. This isn't the only complementary and alternative type research that I've looked at this year. One of the things I'm most happy with is a series of 11 retractions for Mahmoud Amin Abdullah. These were research papers on using different herbs or novel compounds to prevent stomach ulcers. So his approach was typically to pump pure ethanol into sedated rats' stomachs and to see if any of his herbal concoctions prevented the serious damage that this causes. As far as I'm concerned, this seems like a pretty poor experimental model. I don't imagine the findings would ever translate well into humans, but it doesn't really matter because the results are worthless anyway. After noticing a few image duplications, I ended up painstakingly cropping out nearly 800 pictures from his papers using the snipping tool, and then writing a Python script to resize and relabel them all, and generate PDF documents so I could feed that to Image Twin AI. Using this method, I was able to identify a huge mess of recycled images labeled as all kinds of contradictory experimental conditions. It completely demolishes the credibility of this research and is one of the retraction notices from Plus One. I think they may have used their own image software here because there are findings that I didn't mention. And in general, Plus One has also impressed me this year. They have been responding to emails. And in this case, they took some decisive action. It's not the only paper that they retracted. Here's another one by a different team, for example. I initially commented here on a narrow overlap that I spotted with my bare eyes well, I mean my human eyes, and then in 2023, Cheshire from Twitter used his AIs, and some more problems were identified. Plus One retracted this in November. Back to the stomach ulcer papers, it wasn't just Plus One that retracted these. There were also two retractions by Dove Press from their journal Drug Design, Development and Therapy. And Dove Press have also been pretty responsive to me. I just can't quite shake the feeling that the research integrity specialist I usually email doesn't like me, but at least the retractions are swift. I put together these crazy diagrams of overlapping invasion and migration images, which are typical of the non-coding RNA field, and really Dove Press wasted no time retracting a lot of these papers. You could say they're hawkish on retractions at least, but they should probably just stop accepting so much rubbish. One of the types of papers I comment on most frequently are wound healing studies. The experimental strategy here is to cut a big hole in the back of a rat or mouse and then apply some kind of ointment or nanoparticles to see if it heals quicker than leaving it untreated. I think these studies are frankly cruel, they don't often seem to come with any strong ethical or scientific justification, and they often contain image errors which make the results basically pointless. And really, if you cut a giant hole in a rat and don't achieve anything scientifically, I think that just amounts to torturing animals. So this year I've spotted one wound healing related retraction from the Elsevier garbage pile Helion, it's really a drop in the ocean. I must have commented on hundreds of these papers. Another avenue of scientific inquiry that seems hopelessly infested with nonsense is anything involving hydrogels. I still don't 
fully understand what these are, but I've identified these three overlapping areas in this paper from authors at Edinburgh University, and the Wiley journal Macromolecular Materials and Engineering retracted this one. The authors blamed the least senior researcher, who apparently no one was able to reach. There were at least three retractions for Miami cancer surgeon Francis Hornacek, but I already made a video about that, you can watch that one here. And there were a few more retractions which I'm not going to talk about specifically, but I'll finish with my favourite one, which was for a paper published in the International Journal of Epidemiology and Health Sciences. This is a strange journal, it looks like a predatory journal, but apparently there are no fees to publish in this journal, and all the papers are open access, I don't really understand how this journal operates, but let's look at the paper. It was authored by a pair of Nigerian Josephs, Joseph Oyapata Simon and Joseph Opayemi Tosin, and it's an update on COVID-19. There are a couple of strange charts with the beautiful default Excel formatting, and the lead author appears to have named a factor after himself, which is pretty weird. The legend of figure one says, the x-axis represents the comparison, or the Oyapata factor, and the y-axis represents countries. It's a kind of pointless paper that doesn't make any sense, but it's the references that I commented on. The last in-text citation in this paper is reference 41, so we should expect 41 papers in the bibliography, but it actually goes all the way up to reference 89. And most of these are, unsurprisingly, self-citations. The two Josephs are trying to boost their metrics by citing their own irrelevant papers. Like, how could this paper ever be an appropriate citation in a COVID-19 epidemiology update? Effective anacardium occidentale fruit juice extract on hematological parameters and spleen of paracetamol-induced injury in albino rats. But my favourite citation of all is reference 89, the Earth, an alien planet in another universe. And this is just like, well, it's science fiction published as something shaped like a scientific paper in a predatory journal. Let me read a paragraph from this. Another plausible theory is the reinterpretation of Big Bang Theory. Every universe is sustained by a balance of two forces, centripetal, Oyapata force, and centrifugal, anti-Oyapata force. It is possible that at a particular point or time, our parent universe, Opayemi universe, for some yet to be known reasons, had a chronic or acute drop in Oyapata force, compared to an incredibly strong anti-Oyapata force. This failed balance may have resulted in total or peripheral explosion of Opayemi's universe, causing different fragments and matter to be snatched away by multitudes of available universe. This may explain why it is very difficult to find another Earth-like planet in our current universe, called Dare's universe. The Big Bang Theory, in this case Simon Oyapata's theory, may not be the beginning of a the universe, rather the end of our previous universe. It is also possible that our parent, or Opayemi's universe, to be well over 13 billion years. This may be the reason for chronic decay disintegration and or explosion. Okay, so this was cited in a COVID-19 update. Pretty bizarre, right? And the editors of the International Journal of Epidemiology and Health Sciences have, to their credit, retracted that COVID-19 update because of the irrelevant and fictional references. I haven't reported the Alien Planet paper, it already tells on itself, but I am curious to see if Joseph keeps trying to cite it. So I'll leave it there, around about 40 retractions this year that I can reasonably claim to have prompted, but I've only really been sending emails industrially since September this year, and I've started to track the number of papers that I've sent emails about. Here's a cumulative chart, and you can see these big jumps are where I've shared lists or spreadsheets with journals or publishers. There's often a big lag here. Publishers might take six months or even a year to respond to these concerns. So uh, when they do, I expect next year there will be rather a lot more retractions. Perhaps I'll make a similar video at the end of 2024. And one last thing, recently my analytics have tanked precipitously again. So <laughs> please do subscribe to this channel. YouTube will probably not recommend my new uploads to you. So if you want to see them, you can do that trick with the bell. I'm mostly at peace with the fact that these aren't videos for a wide audience, but you know, leaving comments will give me a bit of encouragement if you're actually interested in this stuff.